Hello everyone, Christian here. Today I want to show you a new feature of the archive, importing images. Adding visualizations to notes and reference images for your research can make a huge difference. And the archive makes capturing all this very easy now. I'm going to demonstrate how to import pictures from Finder into your notes, how to grab images from websites, how to insert screenshots, and how to manage the images from the archive. To put files from your computer into your notes, drag and drop them into the editor. The archive will ask how you want to import the picture. You can link. This will keep the file where it is and its path will be referenced. This can be useful if you already manage your pictures elsewhere. You can copy. This will put a copy of the image into the media folder that the archive manages. You can also pick move. This will put the file into the media folder as well, but by moving instead of copying the file. This is useful to import images from your downloads folder and clean up the downloads folder in one go, for example. Let's pick this. The image has been moved into the media folder and you can see a thumbnail right in the archive. Click the link to the file name and it takes you to the location on your drive in Finder. See, that image resides here now. You can also copy files from Finder and insert them into the archive like you would copy and paste text. It goes like this. Select the file in Finder, then hit Command C or right click and copy. Go back to the archive and hit Command V or right click and paste. The image has been copied into the media folder this way. The archive will know when it already manages an image in the media folder. That means you can copy or drag and drop images from that folder and insert them into your notes without creating duplicates. See, it didn't ask how to import because there's no importing left to do. The same goes for copying. Copy and paste of images works with a couple of different kinds of applications. For example, chat apps like Apple's own messages, but also web-based ones like WhatsApp. To demonstrate that pasting works with not just files, let's open a picture and grab a piece of it. In image editing apps, you can select a piece of a picture and then hit Command C or use Edit Copy to copy the selected region. Now if you paste that into the archive, that's not going to be the whole file. So the archive will create a new image file for you with just the contents from your clipboard. When you grab images from the web, the archive will import the images as well. Here we're looking at a picture of the knowledge flower from Sasha's recent post. Let me grab that real quick from the website. I right click and copy the image in my browser so it's now on my clipboard. Then. I switch over to the archive and simply paste. There you go, the flower is now in the node and the archive stored a copy of the image to disk in my managed media folder. The image file name is the same as the original, just as it was for images copied from Finder. Let's say I don't need the date from the original file name in front of it and want to rename it. I can do this from the archive like so. Right-click the file path in the image markdown, select Rename, remove the date from the file name. Note how the dialog says you don't need to provide a file extension. See how the file changed in Finder as well? This renaming of things is pretty nifty when the original has a good name. But what happens when the name is generic, like with screenshots? Let me snap a screenshot of the Zettelkasten website header. The macOS shortcut to take screenshots to the clipboard is command shift control 4 See the crosshair cursor? I can snap a portion of a screen just here. Now the snapshot is in my clipboard. I can paste it in the archive. Command V. There you go. Since screenshots on macOS are stored as PNG files, the archive knows that this is also going to be a PNG. To the left, a new image appeared in the Managed Media folder. It has an automatically generated file name with a PNG file extension. To rename, we'll do the same as before. 
First, right-click the pasted image file in the image markdown part, pick rename and then we'll call this Zettelkasten website header. I'm using this a lot when I document user interface details while programming or to embed graphics from articles about coding techniques. So, to manage pictures from within the archive, you can rename images from the right-click menu, click the file path to open in Finder, and also copy the full path to the picture, maybe when you want to link to it from a reminder or some other application. Select Copy Link from the context menu here, and when you paste it somewhere else, you get the full path. Well, that's it. That's the final piece for today. I hope you enjoyed the demo and experiment with pictures and screenshots in your notes a bit more. See you soon and I hope you have a great rest of your day.